Next speaker is, again, a household name, a person that's, that's well known to, to everybody. That in, this lady started Coon Vera 50 years ago this year, 50 years ago. Isn't that fantastic? And in that time, she treated 75,000 people. So it's Ireland's largest voluntary provider of rehabilitation treatment for individuals suffering from addiction and other related issues. So since, 1960, since its formation in 1966 by Sister Concilio, Coonvera has treated over 75,000 people. Its main objective is rehabilitations of persons suffering from alcohol, drug, and gambling addictions. At any one time, Coonvera has 600 people in treatment through their nationwide centres in Brewery, County Limerick, Farans, Farnans in County Cork, Athy in County Kildare, and Cullarne in County Galway, and Yorie County Down. So, tremendous lady, tremendous devotion to our Blessed Mother, and without further ado, I'm not going to take up her speaking time. Please put your hands together for Sister Concilio Fitzgerald. Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see so many friends around and so many friendly faces and to be in the presence of so many good people. I needn't tell you I'd be far more comfortable sitting down there with you than up here. <laughs> but I suppose I have to do the best I can where I am and um, trust Our Lady and the Lord himself. I suppose if they brought me through the last 79 years, they'll bring me through this patch. I can tell you that without them, without Our Lady in particular, there would be no such place as Coonvera. And um, only for the way they protected me, especially I suppose for myself, and from all the trouble I could have got myself into, um, only for them, I could never have survived or I could never face the day. Um, this year, of course, is the year of mercy and forgiveness. And um, there are times both go hand in hand. Uh, Pope Francis certainly has opened the doors to both mercy and forgiveness. He opened the doors of all the churches and hopefully have opened the doors of all our hearts as well. He is a great Pope and we are blessed to have him. And um, he says that forgiveness is the highest gift and grace of all. Um, he himself is a great example of that forgiveness and um, how he is helping our priests and our bishops and everybody else to promote mercy and forgiveness in our world. Um, the Lord himself, I suppose, in the one prayer he gave us, it was the only time, the only sentence in that prayer that there's a condition going with forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us so um, we can judge how we're going to be judged ourselves by the way that we judge or forgive other people it's just amazing that um, Forgiveness seems to stand out so much in our lives and in our living. One of the great mercies of the Catholic Church and of the Lord himself to the apostles on the eve before he ascended into heaven, he said to them, receive you the Holy Spirit, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them. And what a gift, what a gift and what a mercy for all of us. Uh, there's nothing, I suppose, that 
um, could take the place of confession. Uh, it is so great to know that no matter what we do, or no many, matter how many times that we miss the mark, and indeed some of us miss the mark on a regular basis, it's great to know that we can be forgiven. And all we have to do to be forgiven is to go to confession. Um, the letter that the Bishop of Kerry sent out to this parish this week is said that people should not be anxious or fearful about going to confession, or that they shouldn't go to confession out of obligation, that they should go to confession feeling a sense of gratitude and relief that they can go and be forgiven by the Lord himself, that the priest in the name of Jesus Christ can forgive them everything and that they can come away renewed and refreshed. I suppose having lived in Coonborough for the last 50 years, um, I would have seen over and over again the power and the grace of confession and the grace of forgiveness People in addiction are really in a state of distress and hopelessness and fear and anger, and I suppose resentment at the way they find themselves. They're angry with themselves and angry with other people. Um, they blame themselves and they blame others. And to begin with, the reason why they ever ended up in addiction is that somewhere along the line, in their probably their earlier years, they ran into some situation. They're all very sensitive people. So that says they were all very sensitive children and that they were easily wounded and easily hurt. And somewhere along the line, some occasion, they felt that they weren't as good as somebody else. Maybe they didn't feel as good as a brother or a sister. Maybe they were compared with somebody down the road. Maybe they weren't as good at games. Maybe this or maybe that. Or somewhere they have been wounded. And this wound, the pain of feeling rejected. Rejection is a pain all of its own. And that pain they try to kill by picking up a substance in order to kill it. The substance is only the painkiller. The pain is the problem. So little wonder then, that people in that situation, that they need more than medicine and more than just counseling. They need the grace of God and they need the spirituality that will bring them through their pain and give them the strength and the courage to deal with it. And so do their families, because families suffer intensely because of addiction. They feel so powerless and hopeless and unable to do anything about the person in the addiction. And the blindness of addiction is enormous. The blindness of all our addictions is enormous. I found that out myself. But um, all addiction, we're blind to it because it's something that we took on to protect ourselves or to help us through difficulties when we were little. 
that we never got away from, and we brought it with us one way or another. But we have found like we are, we are so grateful that from the very first days of Coonborough, even when we were only in an old dairy, we had a priest. I remember Father Michael Kelly, he came from Australia before he'd been with us, and he lived with us until he died. But he was a great man for helping people. He had suffered himself, and he was aware of the road that the people who came to us were traveling. And I can remember all the way back uh, what a consolation it was to them when they got the grace to go to confession. And he was always very patient and helpful. I can just tell you about one evening. Um, a very good friend of mine who had a serious problem. We call him Pat. Too many people here would know if I gave his real name. And um, he had come back from the town with a few drinks taken. And he was a bit scrupulous at the best of times. So he um, decided he'd go to confession to Father Michael, who was just across the corridor from him. So he went in anyway, and he told all his sins, and Father Michael gave him absolution for all the sins he had told, and maybe for sins he had forgotten, and for all the sins of his past, and for every sin he ever had committed. And he came across to his bedroom quite content. But after a few minutes, he remembered something else. <laughs> and he went back over to Father Michael. So Father Michael went over the whole thing again with him, listened to what he had to say, and forgave him again for every sin since he was a child. So he went out back to his room, and a third time he remembered something else. So he came back over, and... Um, Father Michael looked at him, and he said, Pat, he said, I forgave you. God forgave you. And if I used the word Father Michael used, he'd be scandalized. <laughs> and will you so and so off and forgive yourself? So that was our situation. But ever since, we've always had a priest in every house. And even with a scarcity of priests, we still have some of the most wonderful men who do so much in our houses. Now, I can, and so can loads of other counselors. We can listen to people. We can hopefully help them or guide them, but we can never say to them these wonderful words that a priest can say as he holds up his hand and says, your sins are forgiven you. And I think that is the most wonderful thing that can be done for any of us and the most merciful thing that God could ever have given us was the grace to be able to get freedom from all our sins and for the many times that we all fail and falter. I noticed that people always, I encouraged people to go to confession. As a matter of fact, some of them were so fearful years ago to go to confession that I'd have to go in with them and slip out when I had them kind of settled in front of the priest to let them tell their confession. But they'd be afraid to go in. I mightn't have been there since 
very, their very early years. But I always found a great change in people once they had confession. And I noticed that a number of people who may have gone home without going to confession, they surely arrived back again, and the next time they'd be so glad to avail of it. But always they say that the confession, the second confession they make, they usually go to confession before they go home, even though they have gone earlier on. They are more ready for it, and they are more, um, I suppose, secure in themselves, and they have discovered more of their own goodness and their own giftedness and their own value, that they can value themselves, and they are benefit so much more as they discover that goodness because they can aim for better things and for really becoming the beautiful people that God created them to be. So we would have wonderful experiences of the power of confession and what a great mercy it is. Um, as for myself, I don't think I thought about forgiveness very much as a child or growing up. Forgiveness was something that didn't kind of cross my mind very much. It's amazing how we wake up a bit when we're getting older. And um, I really value the few extra years I'm getting now because I am waking up to a lot of stuff within myself that I never dreamt I had to deal with. It's just amazing. And I suppose one of them is forgiveness. Um, I had a good childhood, and I grew up pretty without a whole lot of difficulties, and things went reasonably well for me. And I possibly didn't see that I had anything to forgive. Even if it was there, I just didn't notice it. So I thought I had no power, trouble with forgiving, even though I saw so many people in Coonbera having a huge difficulty and it taking them a long time to get to forgiveness. I was aware of their need to find that grace. But it kind of never entered my own head very much. Until about a few years ago, when I ran into a, a different situation, and I found myself, I suppose, annoyed and upset and all kinds of things. And I found I wasn't able to forgive. I prayed about it, I struggled with it. I told it in confession. I did this and I did that and I did the other thing. But I just couldn't let it go. But fortunately, I went to heal after about, I suppose, a year and a half, maybe two years. I went to a healing service, mass, a healing mass and service in Clanfert with Eddie Stones. And on my way home to Dublin, somewhere after coming through the toll bridge near Kinnegad, along there on the road, I just felt a new freedom. And the whole blessed lot of it left me. My prayers and their prayers were answered. And it thanks be to God, any of that never returned to me again. So, if anybody here has something they cannot forgive, 
I can guarantee you that it is possible, even if you've struggled with it maybe for a year or two or even more. Forgiveness is there for all of us, and it's a freedom and a grace and a wonderful way to be. But I suppose I see now that I'm waking up a little bit, that there's a lot more to forgiveness than just I seem to see in days gone by. Um, forgiveness is something that we have to reach out with around the world. to the places where we see evil, or even, maybe even in our own country. Because we cannot project our evil anywhere else. I've come to realize that. There's no point in looking at evil somewhere else. Because then there is no healing there and no healing here. We have to entrust these other people to the hands of God and entrust our own selves to his care as well. You know, Pope Francis told us that if, if we pray, we will be able to face resentments once we entrust the, where the evil is coming from, the people concerned, to the hands of God, that we will be able to face it and face any other resentments that we may have. Um, I don't know what else I'll say to you. But I, am, I, would, I would say like that um, forgiveness is a much broader thing than I thought it was. And standing up here today, if I was standing up here 10 years ago, I wouldn't have seen it in the same light. I see that we need to be able to forgive all people, to entrust them to the care of God and to follow our own consciences. In a week's time, you know, we might be expecting politicians or other people to follow their conscience, but we ourselves, whether it's convenient or whether it's not, we have to follow, I have to follow my own conscience. I have to do what I know is right. I myself am very grateful that I was given the gift of life, but I am doubly grateful that was I was allowed to be born. So I have to think of the little children. I have to think myself of the little children who may not get that choice or who may not get that opportunity. And I, in my own conscience, have to deal with that just in another week's time. I think I've said enough. And it was a lovely honesty in that of that 10 years ago, she wouldn't have seen things the way she sees them now. And you know, it's so very honest and pure and, and real. So that's what she was saying. She loves every one of us and every one of us love her too. So thank you very much, Sister Concilio. Uh,